Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is one that is very much overdue. You guys have been requesting this for literally over a year now I think and it is a video on how to write your personal statement. I know this is a weird time in the year to be talking about personal statements because obviously you send them off a lot later on in the year. However, because I've got a lot more time at the moment, I thought now is a great opportunity for me to sit down and make these more informative chatty videos and hopefully it will just be useful to refer back to in the future or obviously for people that are watching this in the future. Today's video is also very kindly sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that allows you to build your own website, domain or online store so stick around to learn how I'm using it to start my own blog. So a little bit of a disclaimer, I did not apply to Oxbridge, Medicine, any university or course that was really highly competitive. I go to the University of Leeds and obviously that is a top Russell Group University however it is definitely not the standard of those courses or those universities so I don't know how useful this video is going to be for writing a personal statement for those kind of places because obviously I never went through that experience so I don't really have any advice for that but just so you do know I do business management and the universities that I applied for were obviously Leeds, then University of Birmingham, University of Manchester, University of Warwick and Aston University. For the sake of keeping this video as short as possible I'm going to assume that you have already chosen the course that you want to study and the universities that you want to apply to so this video isn't going to give any advice on how to do that, I'm just going to assume that you know that information already and now you want to write your personal statement. Okay, so the first step, in my opinion, is definitely planning. I do not think you can write a good personal statement without having some sort of plan first. And what I do to plan is I would write down a list of everything that you want to include in your personal statement. So this can be work experience, hobbies, part-time jobs, books you've read, anything that basically links to your subject and shows that you've got an interest in it. However, you could literally just write down anything that you're doing at the moment or anything that you've done in the past few years. Not everything is going to really directly correlate to your subject, however, you can make links. And therefore, the next thing that I would do once you have this list is create those links. So some things are going to be really obvious. For example, if you've got work experience in law and you're applying to law, that is a very clear link. However, some things might not link as well, but that does not mean that you can't talk about them. So for me, I I spoke about my YouTube channel as sort of a running theme throughout my personal statement but I didn't really speak about YouTube itself. I spoke about it in terms of business, so negotiating deals, marketing, working with companies. I did the same thing with work experience so at the time I had some work experience in marketing and obviously that links really well but I also had some work experience in law, corporate law. So I spoke about that but I didn't really speak about about law. I spoke about how it shows the more numerical, strategic side to business and how that was different to my marketing work experience but built my knowledge on business and sparked my interest. Then also things like my head girl position and how that showed like leadership qualities and sparked an interest in management specifically. So those are just some examples of the kind of thing that I spoke about and kind of thing you could speak about. However, I got a few questions as well about what to do if you don't have work experience and things like that and I think obviously work experience is very important but I think sometimes we overly focus on it. Of course if you have work experience and things like that then definitely talk about it but I think with your personal statement you can think outside the box a little more than that. When creating this list just try and think about other things that maybe aren't your typical thing however still show an interest so this can literally be books that you've read, articles that you've read online, maybe a documentary that you've watched. You don't necessarily have to have worked or got experience in that sector to have an interest in it. So 
anything basically that shows that you are taking an interest outside of your studies in it and showing that you've got a passion and want to explore it further. Also you can talk about your A levels of course, not your grades because that is included in a separate part of the UCAS form but you can definitely talk about your subjects. For me this was a bit of a weird one because I took A level English literature, history and biology and then applied for business management so none of them really link. However the way that I spoke about them and made them link is I talked about the skills that I had learnt from the subjects. So not particularly the content of the subjects because obviously the content doesn't link. However skills such as analytical skills, research skills, application skills, things that you can also apply to business. So once you have made a list of all of these things then I found it quite helpful to actually group things into paragraphs. So certain things that you might have done or are doing might show similar experience or similar skills so it can sometimes be a good job to group these together so your personal statement has more of a flow and a theme throughout. Lots of people were asking how to structure it and the structure that I used and personally I think personal statements are a difficult thing to have a set structure for because everyone's is so so different so I didn't use a particular structure at all. Lots of people say oh yeah majority should be academic, this percentage should be non-academic however I literally just like mixed all of mine up. I'm not saying that this is how you should do it because obviously everyone's is completely different and I think your structure is very much dependent on what you're talking about. You should just structure it in a logical way that means that it reads smoothly and everything flows from one paragraph to the next. So I really don't think there is a set amount of paragraphs or a set amount of words or a set percentage of what you should talk about. You should just make sure it's well structured and I know that's really really vague but you'll know when it is and also this is where getting a second opinion or just the opinion of anyone else is a really good idea. Just interrupting to tell you about Squarespace who have very kindly sponsored today's video. As I mentioned earlier Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that allows you to build your own website, domain or online store. You can do this for business use such as if you have an online store there are lots of features on Squarespace that allow you to sell products, manage your inventory and manage that whole side of things However, you can also use it personally, such as I have created my own blog. I found having a blog and my own website such an amazing creative outlet. I have always loved journaling and obviously I waffle on the internet for a job, but there's something really satisfying about getting your thoughts down in words and having them displayed and people being able to read them in such a seamless and easy way. And therefore setting up my website has been really enjoyable and really satisfying satisfying. I'll leave a link down below in the description to my blog if you want to read any of the posts I've created or just so you can see the kind of website that you can set up on Squarespace and if this is something that you think you'd be interested in once again whether it's for business use or personal use then you can actually set up a free trial so you can build an entire website for free and then once you're ready to launch if you use the link that I will put down below in the description and on screen you can actually get 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. So once you have planned out all of the things that you want to say in your personal statement, my next piece of advice is to simply start writing it. I feel like people really really overthink the first draft of their personal statement however it's a first draft for a reason. No one is ever going to submit the first thing that they write. I think the opening paragraph is especially something that people are worried about and overthink and if this is how you're feeling then my advice would be to simply skip that part for now and move on to the main body of the argument. You'll find once you've written your main body it's a lot easier to actually visualise what you're going to say as your introduction because then everything will just flow a lot easier. You'll know how to introduce what you're saying because you've already written what you're saying and when you're writing the main body just try and not think too much about it. Obviously think about what you're saying and follow your plan but try not to over analyse everything you're writing. Literally just get your thoughts down in words. I think doing it this way as well also means that your personal statement has a bit of personality to it. I feel like if you really overanalyze every sentence as you go along it can seem quite forced whereas if you're writing it just 
as you'd like almost say things, then even if you go back and really edit it and change the way you've worded things, at least the foundation of what you've written is going to be your voice and your personality. Don't worry as well if your first draft goes over the character limit. Just get everything that you want to say down because personally I feel like it's a lot easier to cut down on words than it is to kind of like force more words. Now let's talk about the dreaded opening paragraph. This is difficult, I'm not gonna lie, but I feel like, once again, people really overthink and overanalyze it. So I personally started mine with a quote. I didn't start as in like from the start with a quote, but my opening sentence did include a quote. And I know quite a few people say, oh, don't do this, this isn't a good idea. However, I think it was relevant what I said because it was introducing an idea from an author that then sort of ran throughout my whole personal statement. So the quote was about the internet and basically like digital marketing and as I said I spoke about my YouTube channel and that side of things throughout my personal statement. Do try to avoid really cliche phrases or opening sentences though. I'm not going to go through any in this video but if you look it up there are some really common culprits of what people have written and just try to avoid the However, just like I said for the structure, I feel like your opening paragraph is going to completely vary from person to person because it completely depends on what you've written in your main body. This is why I think it's a good idea to start with the main body and then write the introduction. Your introduction is basically just like any other introduction, like you'd write in any other essay, basically just summarising and letting the reader know what you're going to be talking about in the main body of your argument. Okay, so now onto language and tone. Obviously, I said previously, it's good to have some sort of personality in it. However, you do need to bear in mind that it is a formal piece of writing that you are sending off to university. So make sure to keep your tone formal as possible. However, there's a difference between writing concisely and elegantly and just writing waffle and using really flowery language because you think it makes you sound academic. Sometimes with personal statements, it's actually a good idea to write them quite simplistically. I thought my personal statement was really simplistic and my first draft was was initially very sort of flowery and using sort of like overly academic words because I thought that made me sound good. However, universities are not going to care how many words you have in your vocabulary or how many synonyms you can use for things. At the end of the day, all they really care about is your actual point. So sometimes writing in a more simplistic way means that what you're saying is going to be a lot more concise and actually shows that you know what you're on about and you know what is relevant to that course and therefore shows a greater understanding of it. Obviously as well you do need to hype yourself up in your personal statement. You are supposed to be selling yourself to the university on telling them why you're such a great student. However I think there is a fine line between doing that and just sounding arrogant. I watched the UCAS video on personal statements this morning actually just to see what they said and arrogance was one of the things they pointed out that they don't really want to hear from you and I know this can be difficult because your personal statement is you showing off, like that's the point of it. You're not gonna sit there and be like, oh, I'm really bad at this actually. But I think this is where getting a second opinion or just someone else to read it works really well because they can probably detect like if you're writing in an arrogant way, like I'm sure you don't mean to do it, but sometimes your tone can come off a bit weirdly. So yeah, I'd recommend just getting someone else to read it to make sure that you're not crossing that line. That also links to my last point, which is basically just ask for help. A personal statement is not really something you are expected to just sit and write on your own and submit on your own. I had at least five meetings, I think, with my head of sick form over my personal statement and made a lot of improvements. I think in total I had about five drafts which I know isn't loads but is also not a small number and I know obviously you can't at the current situation go and meet up with a teacher however you can still communicate with them. There is a wonderful invention called email so just email a copy to a teacher whether that's a teacher that you know in school, a head of sick form, just someone who can look over it and give you feedback because 
this is not something you need to do on your own even though of course we are at home at the moment on our own you can still reach out for help and teachers will expect you to do that and want you to do that it's also good as i've said throughout just to get other people's opinions of it but also make sure to give it to people who are going to give you constructive criticism so i know maybe giving it to your parents is probably not the best idea because they might be like oh yeah it's fantastic because you're their child so maybe giving it to a teacher that you don't know as as well could be a good idea because you might think your personal statement is fantastic and therefore people that you're close with might also want to tell you oh yeah it's fantastic however if you give it to someone that's going to give you more harsh criticism it's actually a lot more constructive so yeah that is all of my advice for personal statements i hope this was somewhat useful and helpful even if you're not writing it until far in the future but if you did enjoy then make sure to give it a like subscribe to my channel and also follow my social media which will be linked down below in the description bye guys <laughs>